from Warsaw University of Southampton and Hong Kong University who are going to talk a little bit about ways in which they've enhanced um, the, the functions of their repository and looked at augmented content. So I'm delighted to hand over to Jakob who is going to open this morning's proceedings. They, they will do when you're... Okay. It is my, my pleasure to be the first speaker uh, today. I'm very happy that, you all, uh, that there are so many of you that managed to get up so early. And I will be talking about uh, augmenting open repositories with social func functions. And for this goal, I will show how we used ontologies to start with. At first, I will tell about uh, a little bit about Synod project, which was our motivation to do such work, because at the beginning we uh, we were we were having digital library, but now with the Synod project we change a lot, and it is, it is motivation. Then I will tell about uh, social fun functions required by the, by this project and show how we used ontologies for analysis of this goal. It is the first step of every computational project to do analysis. It is often forgo uh, forgotten by many scientists that they should do such thing, but it's very important. When we know what to do, then pr coding is, uh, let's say, much simpler. Then I will show this analysis in not too detailed way, then show how this analysis is, is complete, and then there will be short conclu conclusion. So let's start with Synod project. At the beginning in ICM, we, have, we designed Virtual Library of Science. It's a custom digital library, we did custom digital library platform that hosts the Virtual Library of Science. This project started in 2001. Its, its goal was to create a platform for, digi uh, for integrated digital libraries. It means that we get data from different providers and show them on, in a unified way to allow unified search, unified access. This it was also caused by the licensing, actually, because Polish government said that when they are buying something from publisher, they want to keep it on our side, that when publisher would bankrupt or something happened, it's still in our on our place, and we can use it. Because ICM is processing licenses for Elsevier, Springer, IEEE, for ho all Polish institutions. It means that we transfers a, a huge amount of money for this, but this means that our position in negotiation is much stronger because, you know, you, you, we are the only place that they can sell it in Poland. And in this project, we used different versions of metadata schema BW Meta. It was caused by the change. We were developing a system. We changed the metadata schema, so we got like three or four versions actually different versions, because now we got only minor differences between versions, so we call them B BW Meta 2, and it's okay. So, Virtual Library of Science is really impressive. We've got 9.2 millions of articles, and some of them are full text, generally most, the most of them are full text, and some of them are only uh, with bibliographical information like abstract, because in 2001, it was not so popular that all, let's say, contributors to our system were providing full text, like Bastek, which is Polish source, uh, got 230,000 <coughs> records, and it covers the most of Polish science and technology publishing, but at the beginning they were generally into abstracts, not on the, into the full text. Uh, but our virtual library of science, unfortunately, inherits much from a traditional library. It means that it, w when we were designing it, we were shown, we talked a, a lot with the librarians, and they, sh and they t talked us about what functions they need, but it was still a little bit traditional way. We can, uh, they can, user can search for something in libraries, and he can get text. Even one of the important things, which is browsing, 
which means that I can check what, what journals are in libraries and look into volumes, issues, and then get article is the way that it, it was demanded by librarians. It is actually not needed now, probably, because people usually do full, does full text search or even would ask for some semantic search. But, and this all was the goal to start the Synod project. In, it is interdisciplinary system for interactive scientific and uh, s scientific technical information. This project is nationwide, which means that we got 16 Polish leading research institutions particip participating in this project. It is quite impressive number. And we have, and it would be generic system for storing and searching and processing all of the possible electronic media, including articles, movies, computer programs, voice recordings, of course. And it is like many, some partners are generally into the processing or searching of data, while the and when I'm saying searching, it's not like full text index, but doing some semantic search. It is the problem that concerns some of our partners, which are usually more into theoretical computer science, but now they show how they can use this theory. But, and to, and of course it would be, in this, in this project we will produce a platform for managing large amounts of heterogeneous contents. You see that in Virtual Library of Science we have 10 millions of weak records and it is only beginning. And in ICM we, provi we produce the basic platform for storing this data and indexing them in the simplest way. And we are creating a new universal per portal for researchers which is called Infona. And Infona portal, of course, have to has some social functions. A little bit later, I will show you what are the social functions demanded by scientists. This project was, is financed by NCBIR, NCBIR, which is a Polish institute, uh, uh, government agenda that is responsible for financing some part of science. We got two, uh, two kind of these institutions, and one of the, this is answer by, by IR. And they, and th we signed some contract for the project, and from this contract we can get functional requirements. And in this project we will use only one version of BW Meta format, it would be version two, and we are very happy about it because it simplifies the system a lot. Okay, now why Synod Platform and Infona is an open repository? Because we are here about open repositories, not virtual libraries or something like that. In Poland it is very strong, and in our institution especially, it's the open mandate initiative, that, and uh, the system should, and to have this initiative nationwide, we need a system in which we can store open, da open data, uh, things. So we have to be able to host open uh, license data. We should be able to allow authors to publish their works, apart of importing huge collections from publishers, which would be one way of uh, gaining content. We will also try to uh, allow authors to publish their works, and it wouldn't be uh, limited to papers. We can also, the author could publish data set and computer programs and so on. We should support restricted access content. It is, we've got huge collection from commercial publishers. They are not allowing to um, publish something which is not uh, access restricted. And actually, I think licensing, which is said that it is very bad and so we want to be open, actually I think that we should consider licensing in the open repositories just for publishing with moving wall delay. Let's say that I got some data. It is a problem. Scientists produce some data. Today these data are very interesting, but the scientists want to get some, let's say, patent. Then he does, he does not obviously publish this data before getting the patent, but when he or she gets the patent, then everything's uh, changed 
because these data are not interesting for him, he or she anymore. So he or she wouldn't try to lose time for publishing. So we have to get license that would allow him to publish. We're saying that actually the, it would be available to a white audience later. OK, now let's say about social functions. So get to the core. So first social function is discussing the resources. When there is a, so a society of scientists, they can read the paper and they can discuss this paper. And why they shouldn't do it in an open repository platform? Second thing is organization of users into some groups. Sometimes it's not good to discuss something in nationwide society of scientists. Sometimes it's better to form a smaller group. Sometimes I would like to follow activity of other users, especially if I know that uh, there is some profile that belongs to some famous scientist. I would like to know what he or she has published. I would like to follow activities of some organization, like knowing that some organ uh, in university or some uh, association is uh, making a conference or some meeting. I would like to get known, be, be informed about it. And of course, I would like to share a reading list. So, what w and f because w this, is this required functions, comes to the, pro, to the, from the official agreement that we have signed with institution that finance is financing our project. And now we need to, uh, I would like to show you what, uh, how to find objects that we would be needed to object classes, what are relations between these objects. And this thing usually is done by a, a analytics who, uh, who sit down, look, and think, how can I, actually write it. And they started to write it down from the scratch. But now, in the, nowadays, due to semantic web, we've got a lot of ontologies. They exist. Some of them are really popular. And they can be reused. It's like with programming. Every programmer could write down program from the scratch. But many times, he used commons libraries. And it simplifies programming a lot. It shortens code. It demands less time. So for what, what uh, existing ontologies I will use during this analysis, I said that I will use, of course, Dublin Core for bibliographic elements. And if something is not covered by Dublin Core, because it usually happens, then I will use Bibo ontology. Then I will use front of front ontology for the basics of social functions. But I need front of front is not enough, and I will I would use also semantic interlinked online communities for this goal. Now let's get to not to detailed analysis. So in the table I will show you the objects. Of course we got the person. Uh, and actually we've got the person and we've got the person profile. I will show you the difference a little bit later because it's a different thing. Is it a person which actually exists in real world or is it a person profile that is showed on the Facebook page, on the LinkedIn page? Or is it the person description that is shown on the, first, uh, on the cover of the book? It's a different information, it's a different behavior. So we need to distinguish between person and person profile. And person profile got two subclasses, user profile and author profile. It is because sometimes it is a problem to identify an author of the work. We can get two, two works by Jakub Jurkiewicz, for example. I know that there exists second Jakub Jurkiewicz in Poznan, which is not far from Warsaw. And he, is making, he was uh, making PhD in computer science, so our works could be mixed very easily. So we've got author profile and user profile, and we've got the person. Now we, we would need published object. It was something which is usually close to article or journal or book, but not limited to it. Could be as well a computer program or uh, some video recording. Uh, we can get, of course, we will need person group, which comes from a FOAP group or SEO group, user group. We've got organization. We've got some event, like conference. 
We, and we, we will need document collection and we will need posts. Now, what, what can we do about it? Now let's get to the person. We've got person. Person is real word, object, but it does not exist in computer system. In computer system, we will have author's profiles and user's profiles. User profile is, uh, is started by person when this person is registering in our system. We need some registration when, outer, when some person comes, gives us our, some name and surname, some email address. And the second kind of profile could be author's profile, which, uh, which is deduced from the, first, uh, from the cover page. It's a big difference. And now, this is person profile. We can have, for one person, we can have many person profiles, especially author's profiles. Sometimes, we should n not show that this person, that these two person profiles are connected. Sometimes they could be, but sometimes they could be not. Sometimes some author could ask, some, sometimes some person could ask not to connecting these profiles. When he, we don't know why, but sometimes he wants to discuss something on the forum, but don't want to be connected to their works. Here is shown how this actually person profile is a little bit deduced from fourth person, but user profile is exactly a subclass of stock user account. Now, what's the g this is a little bit confusing. It's about group. We've got group, and as you see, user profile is member of the group. We cannot say if the person is member of the group, but for, for sure. Person profile is an object existing in the system, so this object is connected to the group. Person is not existing in our system. Person is not coming into computer, except Tron movie, but. Uh, a user profile could be owner of some documents collection. User could make some document collection and share them, especially, which would be shared reading list. Sometimes I would, let's say, my professor makes some reading list and says to his students, OK, this is the reading list. Please read, the, read it. Of course, group could also have some documents collection, like some working group, especially international, could have some common, uh, uh, some a uh, reading list. This, is, this list contains some published object, <coughs> as, uh, and group could have a forum. On forums there are posts, posts could be reply of the, uh, to some other posts, and posts could be related to one or more published objects. So this post could be some, let's say, comment or something like that. It's not official, but it still could be very useful. Sometime, and wh why here? Why not use Facebook or something like that? While this portal is for community of scientists, then comments would come from scientists. We could expect that there will be no stupid comments that are usually comes on the public forums, but here we, can, we would be able to, let's say, some fil do some filtering of users. Not very strong, but still. OK, and user is a creator of, of post. This post, when post is replies, and we got when we've got uh, posts that are replies, we've got some tree and we got threads. And post belongs to the forum. Okay. Now, now a little bit about event. We can say that the, we've got event that is organized by some organization, which especially could be institution, by, but not for sure institution. It could be consortium. It could be association. It could be a group of individuals that are not connected as a formal way. And kind of event is conference, but we how much time? OK. And uh, the published object could be published at event, could be product of event, or could be presented at event. Now let's check completeness. So we've got these five points. And let's check how we can if we if our system that i showed is f this model is enough for uh, keeping the for modeling these functions needed or for our object let's say discussing of the resources we've got user profile published objects we've got forum post 
and we can and we get a bunch of predicates. And the here is only set related, but of course there will so we can discuss the resource for sure. Now we can organize users into groups because I showed you the groups and we can show that there's predicate member of. We've got uh, now following activities of another user. It's to we've got user profile and user can uh, follow activities of other user uh, using post and shock uh, follow is uh, is used for expressing that one user is following the things that was done that has been written on the forum by other user but if we use for predicate we are saying about that user is interested in publications it's not following in the let's say simplest way but it's a little bit different now we've got following activities of organizations and we can and we are we also using this objects and predicates can show okay thank you and now we've got we can share reading list of course which also has been shown so hooray we com it's complete we can uh, sus we we can satisfy all the requirements with this model so our model is enough and now conclusions we reuse a lot of work that has been done previously using existing ontologies as you probably saw i showed you the most of functions describe it quite detailed using ontologies without actually saying much words Usually such description would be at least 100 page and it would be and it would take a really lot of time to produce it. And probably I would make a lot of mistakes because I will do it from the scratch. Now I allowed many people does does I should I saw that many people does this work and I use it work once more and it helps me and thanks to that, I simplified the process of analysis because of smaller amount of work. I've got a, a higher precision because it was written down precisely by another people. And as a bonus, really bonus, is that uh, when I saw that RDF actually is not very good for storing data in our system because I need some basic model, but because RDF, uh, triples are could I should produce usually when communicated give more than one predicate for the same thing because there are different predicates different understand by different systems then I will try to let's say describe one thing with two or three predicates but for storing I need only one thing so I will use still my model but I got easy RDF because thanks to this analysis I know how to produce RDF triples just simply for from my model so okay I mean so what's the future work of course implementation of these functions and I'm a little bit early so thank you for your attention and have you got any questions So do we have any initial questions for Jakob based on his ontology, which is a great way to start a Wednesday, a Wednesday morning, so that, yeah. thank you, that's very good. Um, actually, taking a step back from your ontology, I, I have a sort of licensing question. Um, you were talking about um, Elsevier and Springer and things. So with your, your virtual library of science, do you hold, do you have um, the papers actually held in Poland, then you don't actually access the, the, the subscriptions that, that you're looking for. Actually, we have the subscription subscription to Elsevier, but as a backup, we keep them in Poland in ICM. And not it's not only backup for just not for showing, but it's also backup that we can publish for Polish scientists. It's, it is IP based, a license policy. Okay. It is a virtual library of science has to get some sophisticated licensing systems, system we now s a little bit simplify it, but still we have it. 
and I'm say, saying that in open world, I, of course it's not, maybe not needed, but still some licensing is needed, especially with delayed publishing. It's what concerns me a lot. For example, many publishers say that you can publish your work, but after a year. Yep. After a year, I would not remember where is this work, it is not needed by me, it's not interesting, and I will forget about it. If I could publish the, this work, store it in open repository now, but publish it after one year and don't have to think about it and say, please publish it for me after one year, it could be very good. And when we came, uh, of course you can say, then li write this function, but if you say this function, then someone else could come and say, please give me a function for 30 months or something like that. Okay, great, well, thank you so much. And Thank you again. Are there any other questions for Jakob? Chris? Um, I'm going to bring you the microphone so you can um, I was very interested in the fact that you do have that backup from um, Elsevier within the, within the whole system. And I was wondering whether or not you'd reflected the ontology work back to the suppliers as, and whether they were interested in it or not themselves. Uh, can you explain? Uh, sorry. Um, so you have the backup of the articles. Yes, it, of and you're doing all this ontology work within the system. And, and I'm just wondering whether or not the, the, what you're trying to do with the system in terms of adding value to it, I wondered whether you had uh, uh, told Elsevier about what work you were doing, uh, because it sounded, sounds like they might, it's, I'm uh, wondering whether they're interested in that sort of use of their Actually, information. There's still some problems with licensing with Elsevier because especially some enhancing which is semantic enhancing yeah. we are not quite sure if we can do it oh, yeah. because it's not derivates yeah. work it's still what concerns me also on creative common non-derivates non yeah. which is also open license but this this makes a problem with semantic enhancing right. because the good question is if I'm done semantic enhancing yeah. then did I m create actual derivate work or is it just show presenting yeah. so now we are not giving back any <laughs> uh, nothing back to Elsevier because actually Elsevier even don't ask us about it sure, sure. Okay. Um, thank you very much is there anyone else if not I think we will get set up for our next speaker Just talk near the microphone. Can everybody hear me if I just talk near the microphone? I've got one nod at the back. Thank you very much.